All right, people, we got some XRP speculation on the docket today. You do remember when the SEC sued Ripple, Ripple lost a lot of uh, partnerships like MoneyGram. However, they said they were going to re-engage after the win against the SEC in the lawsuit, of course, with the U.S. market. They did acknowledge their expansion overseas, which is good, but they said they're going to re um, re-engage with U.S. companies. And there might be some news coming out later on that could possibly pump Ripple uh, XRP up. Furthermore, uh, seven major asset managers just filed for an Ethereum ETF. And that means altcoin ETFs could be coming up next. And since XRP does have regulatory clarity, at least for the time being before the SEC appeals, um, XRP could be next on that ETF list. Now, they are futures ETFs because futures ETFs are looked more favorably than spot ETFs by the SEC for some odd reason or other. I don't really know why. Um, so it would be an XRP futures ETF. And yes, it could be used to manipulate the market. But when it first comes through, it will pump the price of XRP because people will be more like able to invest directly or indirectly into XRP as the uh, asset. Right now, there's seven major asset managers. There were six in the news uh, thing yesterday, but one more just joined. And they include pretty big ones like Van Eck and things like that. Um, and I do think some of these futures ETFs will be approved because a lot of the Bitcoin futures ETFs were actually approved. So XRP has uh, like two catalysts for pumping, news from US engagement. And you know, when Ripple says this, I think they're already engaging with certain banks and cer certain companies, definitely certain remittance companies. And I think like just, even if they just were able to get MoneyGram again, which would be kind of difficult because MoneyGram's working with XLM right now, I do actually think that you know that would pump it up right now as well but you know the engagement with us companies and the possibility of an xrp futures etf even though um you know if it's only ethereum right now i think of all the other alts xrp is probably the most likely within the next year to get a futures etf and that could actually pump it up as well um, I think a lawyer has also said Ethereum does not have protection from being a security. I doubt the SEC will actually sue Ethereum. According to like both judges, both the Terra Luna one and the XRP one, basically like what they were hinting at is like if there's any use case of the coin outside of making money, then it's not going to be considered a security. So right now the SEC might not sue a lot of other big L1s because they are very hard to sue. Um, but XRP would actually be the one that has regulatory clarity right now. So, you know, big institutions might be willing to buy XRP futures products or XRP itself to uphold an ETF. So that's why an XRP ETF, besides Bitcoin and Ethereum, is the most likely one out there. And that's going to come at around the same time as I think when the general bull run is going to come for the entire market. So that could definitely be a huge, huge catalyst for an XRP pump and an overall market pump. Like, you know, just getting an ETF along with Bitcoin and Ethereum and the US engagement, especially if they get something like MoneyGram back in their fold. Maybe like they'll finally do something with that Bank of America thing. It's been dormant for a while. Maybe like some of the foreign companies after they see US regulations clarity, they'll jump into using XRP as well. We don't really know all that much about what they plan because they haven't leaked any of it yet. But I can say that it is good to be a little bit more bullish on XRP than before. I still don't think I would buy within the next couple of weeks, though, because I do think like within the next couple of weeks, unless there's some really, really big news, we're probably going to retrace because we are retracing pretty hard from that pump we had earlier with the XRP lawsuit. I wouldn't be surprised if we got below 60 cents in the next few weeks. Uh, but then like with the ETF maybe coming up with more U.S. engagement, you're going to get a lot more hype and FOMO news on XRP. And you know, like the Koreans are always willing to pump that up. By the way, speaking of that, South Korea might become might be becoming the number one crypto country in the world as Upbit is now number two behind Binance for uh, an exchange volume. They did that last week. They got past both Coinbase and OKX. And this is obviously good for XRP because you know the, the Korean gamblers, they pump XRP a lot in Upbit. Uh, Upbit is probably like the primary pump and dump um, exchange out there. 
and they really, really like to pump XRP. So that's another point in XRP's favor. But just the fact that they're becoming number two behind Binance, and of course, Binance is not attached to any one country. They're kind of like international. They have like, they're expanding to branches everywhere in Japan and the UAE and stuff. So like Binance really can't count as like by country. So South Korea is looking to become a major, major crypto hub. And Koreans, they like that XRP. My guess is like they have a lot of them still have bags left over from like six years ago. And they're just waiting for the all time high to sell or going higher. So there's a decent chance that they could, they definitely could pump past the all time high in the next bull run um, because they are becoming like the number one crypto country in the world. And XRP is still heavily, heavily, heavily looked at there, mainly because probably they have like massive bags from years ago. Remember, in the last bull run, XRP did not hit its all-time high. So those people that bought it like, you know, at $1.50, $2, $3, may have been still at a loss and may have not been able to sell at the profit they want. So they hung onto it all the way down. And now, um, with the lawsuit over and the bull run probably coming next year, you know, they're looking to sell at a higher price. So they might pump it up to four or five dollars first before they kind of sell off. But I would also be careful after you hit that all time high, because that would definitely may mean that all those old investors are now in the profit and they could have a pretty big sell off at that point. So there's pros and cons of this, but it's still mainly pros right now because, you know, South Korea becoming number one in the world for cryptos that bodes well for XRP and especially for a FOMO pump. Um, seven major asset managers file Ethereum ETF. And um, I think like XRP could actually be th the next uh, ETF for altcoins being filed. Um, I do think like the US engagement news could actually help XRP pump up even more because, you know, there's going to be major companies and banks that they, even if it's only a Ripple partnership, you know, like the XRP hype army will spin it as an XRP partnership and that will actually pump uh, the coin up some. So you got a lot of things that could actually pump the coin in the next bull run that physically may or may not actually have anything to do with the coin, but just that FOMO and that uh, coming in could actually make an XRP pump again because of several reasons I just mentioned. Coinbase Base is going to launch next week. Now, I would definitely watch some of the other layer twos around this. If there was out of Optimism, Arbitrum, and uh, Polygon, those are the big three layer twos. I would be most bullish for optimism. I've said this before. Coinbase base runs on the opti optimism stack. That doesn't necessarily mean it's going to use optimism. It doesn't actually use optimism. Let's just make that clear. It doesn't use OP. It uses Ethereum as gas. And there's going to be a lot of things um, running on base. But just the fact that it runs on the OP stack might actually make people uh, FOMO into OP when they actually find out. So optimism, I am pretty optimistic on. Not so much for Arbitrum and Polygon, although Polygon has had a lot of news lately uh, about big partnerships and uh, projects they're actually taking investment in. So I think like Maybe like Polygon and uh, Optimism are the two I would really be looking at. Right now, I'd probably back away a little bit from Arbitrum, although I have heard that Arbit Arbitrum does have many projects that are getting the ready to launch on it. But that's a big thing. Coinbase Base started onboarding um, users in July, but now they're actually going to onboard regular users, not developmental users, uh, in August. And that'll be a big step. Watch the other layer twos closely, even watch some of the layer ones. Uh, let's see if like some of that TVL from the layer twos doesn't actually flow back into just Ethereum at this point. So Coinbase base, I think overall is probably better for Ethereum than anything else. Just like the, the base currency of Ethereum, not so much any of the layer twos. So yeah, look, closely at that. Coinbase Base right now does not actually have a coin by itself, and I don't think they're actually going to launch one. There's also a lot of projects launching on Coinbase Base that you might actually want to look at. Um, not really sure uh, if they'll actually do very well, but, you know, and a lot of them are going to be rug pulls, but there are going to be a lot of projects actually launching on Base as this actually comes out. So that's a big thing. Also, Cardano has some news um, they did actually launch their new testnet. Uh, it's with, it, it's a new kind of concept. They're going to launch multiple testnets, which is going to be very, very good for the future. Um, this will allow them to test things more efficiently and push uh, products out, like I think, faster in a more efficient manner. What they're going to do with their main, uh, the, the main uh, testnet is they're going to actually run it, I think, with like, uh, production level uh, parameters, but they're going to use testnet data and they'll have other testnets to test other things. So the whole testing process 
uh, will actually be a lot more efficient. I think it'll be faster. And I think that's a really, really good development for both developers and Cardano users. You know, one of the big complaints for ADA is that it doesn't get things out fast enough. Although like most crypto projects do actually have delays. We all know how much Shelly and Gogan was delayed. And you know, I made a lot of comments about it. Eventually they did get released, but there were a lot of delays in there. And I think this new testnet that runs in parallel with the mainnet that actually has mainnet parameters to let you uh, do testnet data on will definitely help Cardano a lot, alleviate some of those problems. So I, although like this project catalyst thing, I don't think will help, um, uh, price immediately in the future. I do think in the future, it could actually raise people's expectations of Cardano, which would actually make for a very, very good bull run next time. So I'm excited about this project catalyst thing. Probably will not affect price right away, but it will make Cardano much more efficient in terms of testing and releasing things in the future. So that's the news for today. Let me know what you think. Like and subscribe, hit that bell notifications button. Thank you and have a nice day.